Hello, Mike Gunn here from Unorthodox Audio. This video is a quick walkthrough of our St. James the Great organ, virtual instrument. Um, I'll give you a bit of background on the organ in a minute, but just so you know the structure of the video. First of all, we'll have a look at the uh, main view and take you through those controls. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the additional controls uh, that we've included within this virtual instrument. Uh, and then we'll have a look at the combinations view which is the other view that you can use, and then finally we'll have a look at some of the presets in there. Uh, so just a bit of background on the organ. Uh, Richard, the co-founder of Unorthodox Audio, and I both grew up in a little village in Warwickshire called Snitterfield, and this is basically the pipe organ from that church. So the main view is this, basically, what we've got up. Um, so this is what you're welcomed with when you open the instrument. And this is just the sound of the open diapason, which is this stop here that we've got open to start with. So you can hear it's got a nice warm tone to the sound. So the basic premise of the organ, if we have a look at this quick photo of the organ we sampled, you'll see the top keyboard is the swell. The keyboard below is called the grate, and then at the bottom you can see the pedals, which are operated with the feet. Uh, now in our organ everything is operated with the keyboard, but if we have a look at our main view, on the left hand side we have the swell, and these are the stops to do with the swell, these buttons here. On the right hand side we've got the grate, and these are the stops to do with the grate, and then we've got the pedals here in the middle, and these are the stops to do with the pedals. Now to turn a stop on and off, all you do is you click on it, so that disables the stop, and click on it again, and it'll turn white, and that's to say the stop's enabled. So, for example, if we, we've got our open diapason, let's add another stop to it. You'll hear the tones change because we've added this to this. There you go. So that's kind of the basis of, of how an organ works. You open different stops, different combinations of stops, uh, to create different timbres. Now, just to give you a bit of background to this, the, this these numbers that are in the stops and, and, and how you know sort of what what each stop sounds like without just sort of obviously turning them all on and listening to them all. Um, so this open diapason has an eight in the middle. Now that's because it's an eight foot pipe. Now on an organ, the length of the pipe um, correlates directly to the pitch that you hear the note. So an eight foot pipe on our organ means that when you play a middle C, it sounds a middle C. Uh, now if you then look at, say, this pipe here, um, the principle, if, if, if I'd actually, just, just whilst we're looking at this, if you look at this bit down here, you'll see that if you hover over each stop, we've put help messages in to sort of explain. So for example, this is the swell. This is a principal stop, so it's one of the principal sounds. It's four foot. And what you know from the four, and it says later in this help message, is that that sounds one octave higher than played. So basically, as you halve the length of the pipe, that basically gives you uh, an octave leap in pitch. So if we listen to our middle C on the open diapason, this eight foot stop. Now if we select the principal, which is a four foot stop, you'll hear that that sounds an octave higher than middle C. Again, if we go over here to the two foot stop, it'll sound two octaves higher. And if we go down here to one of the pedals, which is a 16 foot, because that's double the length of the 8 foot, that then sounds an octave lower. So you can hear how the sound can really start to build up, because if we select all those at once, suddenly just from one note we've got quite a big sound. So that's basically how an organ works. So in the help messages it will tell you what family of stops this particular stop belongs to. So this is an open diapason, which is a principal stop which means it's one of the principal sounds of the organ. But if you have a look at this next one, this is a celeste, and that's telling you that's a string type stop. Now there's four main families of stops. There's principal, string, reed, and flute. Uh, and we've got mixtures of those here. So for example, the haute bois is a reed, and that's meant to sound a bit like an oboe if you listen to that. Then over here we've got, for example, the clarabella, which is more of a flute type stop, so it sounds a bit more fluty probably hear that there. Now one of the great things we've incorporated in this organ 
is we've got this Celeste stop here. So the Celeste is actually a string stop, but it's detuned slightly from the others, so you get an undulating effect when it's added. So this is without. And if you add the Celeste to the open diapason, you'll hear that sort of undulating chorusy effect that you get because the um, stop's slightly out of tune with the rest of the organ. And that's like a characteristic of a Celeste, which is a particular type of string stop. So, so that's pretty much it in terms of turning the stops on or off just using those buttons. Um, now once you've found a combination you like, and for now we'll just keep with the open diapason, you can adjust the stereo width so you can collapse it all the way to mono or really open it up super wide which really envelops you in the sound. Uh, just have a listen to that. Go down to mono. And now we're super wide which kind of really envelops you in the sound. And if you want to move it back to the default position, just press Command and click, and that'll take you back to where we had it set up at to start with. So next to that, we've got the St. James Reverb, which is a, an impulse response we took off the church. So that is the actual church reverb, and you can add more or less of that tracking this slider. It's not a massive tail because, as I say, it's just this little church in Snitterfield. But it's nice to have that reverb in there if you really want to get the, the feel of the surroundings of, of, of the organ we sampled. And then the other button on this sort of main screen bit here is here, this general cancel. Now, if you have a look at the help note, we've put please note this resets all stops to off, including the combinations which is a view we're going to look at a bit later. Um, so use this with caution. We won't press it for now, but say you've got all your stops open, and you just think, oh, I just want to, I'm getting in a mess, I just want to go back to nothing and I'll start again. Then you just click General Cancel and it resets all stops. Um, we'll have a look a bit later at the additional controls. It doesn't reset those, so if you want to reset those, you have to go through and click on those, but I'll show you how to do that when we get to that bit. But it does reset all the stops back to being off. A couple of other little things just to note is down here we've got transpose functionality and key switching. If you click on transpose then you'll get these little numbers here which you drag up or down depending on where you want to transpose to. So for example we've got our middle C then if we take it up two semitones that now sounds a D. Now the it's very simple and straightforward but the, the way the transpose works is it, it takes the note that you play does the transposition and then triggers the transposed sample. So you play the C, it transposes it to a D, and it plays you back our D sample. So it's not pitch shifting the samples or anything like that, it's just basically transposing the notes you play and then triggering the new notes. So then just below that we've got the key switching. If you switch that on, what you'll see is this bottom selection here um, turns into the key switches. Now red means, in this view, red means the particular stops, the corresponding stops are off or, or in, and the yellow means they're on or kind of have been pulled out on an organ, they've been engaged. So at the moment we've just got the open diapason which is on this D, you'll see if I just press that it turns it on and off. So the way the key switching works is they just turn on and off sequentially. So I'll just do that now so you can just see the order. So that's all of them on and then back again we'll turn them all off. Let's go back to just having our open diapason. So that's basically how the key switching works in this view. Now next we're going to look at the additional controls, this, this bit in the middle here. But just to note at this point that one of the other views we've got is this combinations view, which we're going to look at in a second um, after we've looked at the additional controls. And the key switching changes, so it performs a different function in the combinations view to if you're just in this main view. Right, so let's look at the controls. We've created volume and pan controls for each stop, which is obviously not something you can do on an organ, but it's something that we've thought would be really cool to put into this virtual instrument i using technology to do something that you know, we can't do in the real world. So it's very simple. You've got a volume control for each stop. So for example, if we engage, let's say we've got that 
Opwire and the Open Dire Payson um, engaged, then or active, then we can hear both of those together. Perhaps we don't want quite so much hope wire, so we take that down a notch. And you can hit, you can hear that's just got a notch in there. So you've got a bit of creative freedom over setting up your own mix between each each of the stops, which we thought was pretty cool. Then, so let's put them back to being uh, just at zero. Uh, the way you do that with all these things to reset any control back to how we have it set up as default, all you need to do is do command and click. So if we look at the pan, again, let's move this one fully left and that one and fully right as those are the stops we're using. You can hear those now. Perhaps you want to move this one around. Perhaps we'll leave that one centered and we want to move this one around. You can do that. And if you right click on anything, you can assign a MIDI control to it. So suddenly this is quite a creative tool that you can use within your door to um, automate, you know, pan and volume controls. And I had a, a fun time writing uh, the demo reflection that we've got on our website where I, I've held long chords like that and automated some of the pan and, uh, and volume controls um, for the different stops. Right, so moving forwards, so that's the volume and pan controls done. And then what we've got next here is the swell box. Now, on quite a few organs, they'll have a swell box, and it's effectively like a dynamics pedal, like an expression, like you use expression um, with virtual instruments. It's like a dynamics pedal, but it just operates on the swell stops. So we hear our C major chord, press the swell box, and suddenly this becomes active. And we can swell that in and out. Now, if we open a couple of great stops, just so you can hear how the swell. So all together, it's like this. And then if we want to take the swell down, but the, the great will stay where it is. We can do that, which is pretty cool. And we've assigned that to uh, the mod wheel as well. So you can do it, you see there, just by mod as well. Um, now, I should just mention that if you've set up your own mix here, between the different stops. What the swell box will do is it will just change the dynamic from quiet to loud of the overall swell mix. So it will maintain your mix, um, the ratios of that you've done between each stop, and it will just get, give the overall swell volume a sort of nudge up or nudge down depending on where, you've, where you're using the slider. So that's the additional controls. So let's move on now to look at the combinations view. So if you just click here next to the word combinations, um, we've still got key switching enabled. You, you'll have the uh, sharp minds among you will have noticed that the key switching has now changed. So what we had before was the key switch to turn each stop on and off. And then what we have here is we now have just six key switches. We've used green here instead of yellow just to tie in so that, you know, at a quick glance, you know, you're in combinations view. Um, and just to sort of differentiate between the two. So what these six do is they turn on each of these buttons. So for example, if you go to the next one, it turns on the next combination, next combination, next combination, like that. So what are these combinations? Basically on an organ, often what you'll find you want to do is perhaps just have a couple of stops open for a nice quiet passage and then suddenly there's a really loud passage and you need to open up you know, several more stops at once, more than perhaps you could do with just one hand and say in one beat. So what quite a lot of organs have is they have a way of effectively saving presets to buttons. So it's like saying, well, when you press this button, I just want these two stops open. Then if you press this next button, I want all these stops open. And that's kind of what we've built in here. So you can click through the buttons using the key switching and you'll see that we've got more and more stops open depending on which combination is engaged. And if we just play an easy C major chord, you'll see how that changes. Back to the start. Right, so with the combinations, um, it will remember what you've set up. So for example, if on C1 we actually set it up so there's all the swell stops open, then maybe on C2 we'll 
have all the great stops. And then on C3, we'll have just the pedals. There we go. You'll see now, if I move back to C1, it's remembered all the swell. C2 has remembered all the great. C3 has remembered all the pedals. So all you need to do is go through, and then when you find a patch, you know, combination that you like, assign that to one of these uh, combinations, and then you've got that there, and you can move fluidly through your different sounds. And that's pretty much it in terms of the combinations for you. Ah, one other thing I'll just mention. So this is where the general cancel comes in. So it not only resets the main view to, to all the stops being deactivated, but it also does that with all the combinations. So if we press that now, you'll see that all the combinations are now blank. Um, so just the note of caution that that will wipe all of your saved combinations in a particular instrument if you press that button. So it's there to help you if you need it, if you get in the right mess, but press it with caution. So let's move on. The final bit to do with our instrument is actually looking at some of the presets we've got. So if we close this instrument, no, we don't save any changes, thank you, and go over to here, this folder, Richard's presets. Uh, what Richard's done is he's set up some of his favorite sounds. So we'll just play a few chords on each, just so you can hear the sort of differences, the differences in terms of sounds that, that you can get out of the instrument. We'll just do one or two more. Maybe we'll do Sinking Ship. Maybe Trumpet Call, because I'd imagine that's quite different. So you can hear there's quite a range of sounds. Let's just have a look at this one, warm hug. Lovely. So these are Richard's presets, um, so feel free to use those. But you can also, if we just open up the main instrument again, go back one. We've also put a folder here so you can save some of your own presets. So for example, let's just open a few stops. Celeste, because I like that one in there, give that undulating effect. And let's say we want to save that as one of our presets. So we just go up to the save icon here and go save as, click through. Now, you just want to save it as patch only. Don't press save straight away because it will overwrite our instrument. But put a name in for your preset. So for this, we're just going to put preset demo. Demo. Uh, and click on use the save presets. Oh, I've already done one in there. Uh, and then we'll save it in there. So then, if we close that, you'll see that in the user save presets, preset demo is in there. And we can just load that up really easily. So that's quite a good way of just saving any of your favourite sounds that you come up with. So I think that's pretty much it for looking at the uh, St James the Great Organ uh, virtual instrument. If you have any questions, then just drop us a, an email on our support email. Um, info at unorthodoxaudio.com and uh, yeah we hope you really enjoy using it as much as we've enjoyed creating it so thank you for listening to the walkthrough and um, hopefully catch you on the next one